before presenting some cases demonstrating the appearance of the most important ultrasound features of a nodule, I very briefly provide a summary of these characteristics. You have already viewed two lectures on sonographic assessment of thyroid nodules. Here I focus on definitions. Six ultrasound signs will be discussed. In one of the very first cases, I already spoke about the definitions of nodule echogenicity and composition. Microcalcification belongs to the family of intranodular echogenic figures, which consists of five different features. The first is the fine spider web like connective tissue network of the thyroid, both the nodular and non nodular tissue. In hyperquake thyroid, this can be pronounced. The second, the backwall figure, is indeed an optical artifact which is caused by backwall posterior enhancement. These two structures are characterized by the synchronous presence of echogenic lines and granules. Comatel artifacts represent colloid crystals and the rise in cystic fluid. However, not infrequently we can see in solid parts after the removal or spontaneous absorption of the fluid. In typical cases, it has a characteristic dorsal narrowing tail. The size of a cometal artifact varies, but in most cases it is not larger than 1 mm. There are two forms of calcifications. The hallmark of a macro or coarse calcification is the acoustic shadow dorsal to the primary focus. The latter is not always visible. Microcalcifications are echogenic spots not larger than 1 mm in diameter and lack acoustic shadowing. Two important considerations. First, a true microcalcification represents some of a body of a papillary cancer However, in more than twice as many cases of microcalcifications are described in ultrasound as actually occur. Let's see some examples. The left upper case presents the normal connective tissue network, which is a bit more pronounced within the nodule. More concerning is the left lower nodule, which shows fibrotic changes within the nodule. Depending on the angle between the ultrasound wave and the anatomical structure, a fibrotic bundle can appear as echogenic line, for example, here and there and there, or echogenic granule, this, that and that, for example. There are numerous cometal artifacts within the cystic part of this nodule. Some have large, that one, other have small dorsal tail, for example, this one, while many lack that, that, for example. The last image here shows again a cystic nodule the echogenic lines and granules at the dorsal part of tiny cystic cavities are the backflow figures. Here we can see a line, here another line, here is a granule, here again a spot, and here is again another spot. The left two images present coarse or macro calcifications, the lower one the so-called actual form. In both cases, there is an anechoic brand here and there, dorsal to the primary focus. This is the acoustic shadowing. The right cases proved to be papillary cancer. There are a few isolated punctate echogenic foci in the upper tumor, here, there, and there, but the lower image presents the so-called starry sky phenomenon when multiple microclassifications are present. Let's turn to nodule borders. This diagram summarizes the classification of nodules according to their borders. The normal border is sharp and has no significant undulations. 
The next distinction, this one, is very important. Two kinds of borders. Two kinds of borders are encountered among abnormal ones, blurred and irregular margins. So blurred borders are not irregular, although they are abnormal. No tyrant systems include blurred or ill-defined borders among suspicious features, but all do irregular margins. The latter can be speculated or labyrinthed. This nodule here has sharp borders and surface irregularities of non-significant degree. Here is, for example, a tiny undulation, and there are ill-defined parts. More than 25% of this nodule margins are not well demarcated in the left lower nodule, so its border should be regarded blurred. The right malignant nodules present labulated here and there, and speculated margins. Here we can see speculations characterized by sharp angles, and here again sharp angled speculation can be seen. As a rule of thumb, borders rely on the external surface of a single nodule. So, external, single, and nodule. External or outer, because inner surface irregularities should not be taken into account. Single, because surface irregularity caused by the presence of multiple nodules next to each other does not belong to irregular borders. And finally, lesions of thyroiditis usually present with irregular borders, but these discrete lesions are not pathological nodules. In the left upper mixed dominantly cystic nodule, the borders between the cystic and solid parts are speculated here, but this is an internal irregularity which does not count. In the left lower case, Multiple nodules form a large nodular mass. This is the mass as a whole, which is composed of discrete lesions. For example, here, there a nodule, here another one, and here a hypocritic one. The mass as a whole has uneven surface, but single nodules do not. A typical case of focal form of Hashimoto's thyroiditis is demonstrated in the next image. The speculations and labulations of these areas do not count because these lesions are not pathological nodules. Here we can see a speculation and here, for example, a labulation. Finally, two examples of pathological labulation and speculation. The former is characterized by curved, here is a labulation, the latter by sharp angles. This is a speculation. The shape of a usual regular nodule is oval, that is, follows the normal ovoid, or exactly speaking, rotational ellipsoid shape of a thyroid lobe. More round the shape, greater the likelihood of papillary cancer. There are two forms of irregular shape, in both cases the depths that is, the antero-posterior diameter exceeds its counterpart in the event of transverse scan the width, while in the case of longitudinal section, the length. It is easier to show the situation in picture than to say. So let's see a video. The right lobe is presented, first the transverse scan, and now the longitudinal scan. The non-nodular part is moderately hypocritic and has several discrete lesions. Here we can see a large nodule. So again the transverse scan and now the longitudinal scan. Let's see how to measure the shape of the nodule. So here we are in the transverse view. First, we measure 
the width of the nodule. It proved to be 19 mm. Thereafter, I measured the anteroposterior diameter, that is the depth, and it proved to be 21 mm. So the depth marked with blue arrow or blue line clearly exceeds the width. So the nodule presents taller than wide shape. Let's see the longitudinal section. Here we face with a differential diagnostic problem. It is not evident uh, whether this is the nodule or this larger area. I guess that this entire mass form from the single nodule. So I measure first the length. It is 24 millimeter. And now I measure the depth. This is 21 millimeter. So here in this case, the length clearly exceeds the depth. So the nodule here in longitudinal scan does not present irregular shape because does not present taller than long shape. The last feature to be discussed encounters three signs of a possible extratile direct extension. The first relies on the integrity of the pseudocapsule of not the nodule but the thyroid lobe, while the other two refer to the contour of the nodule. If the nodule is in close contact to the outer surface of the lobe, then we speak of abutment or abutting contour. If the nodule bulges into the neighboring structures outside the thyroid, then it means bulging. In this table, I summarize the possible combinations. Essentially, extratidal extension can be raised if the capsule is discontinuous and the nodule is abutting. Be aware that even the most suspicious combination serves not the diagnosis of extratidal spread, but only its suspicion. In the first example, we can see a nodule which is in contact with the ventral surface of the lobe, so the contours here are abutting. The case illustrates the limitations of discontinuation of the capsule. Here we can see discontinuation, here again, here a third example. These parts of the capsule or the pseudocapsule are clearly outside the nodule. So in this event, the discontinuation has limited relevance. The left lower case shows again a batting contour. Great part of the nodule is clearly at the ventral part of the lobe. And here we can see discontinuation of capsule. The right nodules show all possible signs of extratidal spread. A batting contour here and there lying just on the ventral surface of the nodule. The nodules bulges into the strap muscle. Here is the most ventral part of the lobe and that is the contour of the nodule which is clearly bulging and here it is more even more evident here is the ventral surface of the lobe outside the nodule here again and the nodule bulges into the extratidal uh, tissue the third feature the discontinuation of capsule is also evident here is the pseudo capsule and it lacks in almost all ventral parts of the nodule. And here again we can see the pseudocapsule and it is lacking when the nodule is in close contact with the extratidal strap muscle. Thank you very much for your attention.